Hi there, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department, Frostburg State University. And in this video, I'm going to review some other anti-Markovnikov addition reactions that can follow radical mechanisms like the anti-Markovnikov addition of hydrogen bromide. I do want to note that both of these reactions can also follow other kinds of mechanisms, uh, but under certain conditions they can follow radical mechanisms. The first reaction that I want to show you is the thiolene reaction. And I have another video that goes into the thiolene reaction in more detail uh, in my video playlist on thiols and sulfides. But here is uh, just very simply the thiolene reaction. The thiolene reaction is the reaction between a thiol and an alkene. So I'm going to use 1-butene and an ethane thiol. And the reaction produces a sulfide where the sulfur adds to the less substituted position. And this reaction can have both a radical mechanism and a non-radical mechanism, and in this video I'm only going to talk about the radical mechanism. There are different types of radical initiators that you can start with, but I'm actually going to use uh, the disulfide, which is like the, the sulfur version of um, the sulfur version of a peroxide, and that will make a good radical initiator for this reaction. And like all react radical reactions, initiate, I always spell initiation wrong the first time, I apologize. Like all radical reactions, there is an initiation step where usually we have homolytic cleavage and we break a covalent bond of some kind that is on the weak side. So the sulfur-sulfur single bond is weak, not quite as weak as the oxygen-oxygen single bond actually, but it is a weaker bond and can break through homolytic cleavage with some energy being added. Hide my hydrogen atoms here, and let's put on, let's make radicals. And then again, like all radical mechanisms, there's a propagation step, or there are several propagation steps. The first one of these is going to be the radical addition step across the alkene. And like all radical addition steps, this has a a strong tendency to be anti-Markovnikov. We want to produce the more stable radical that can possibly form at this location. I do not like the way I made those arrows. Hold on a moment. There we go. We want to produce the more stable radical that can form. Well, the mechanism in at least a satisfactory way. Here we go. Okay. Produce the more stable radical that can form. I apologize. There. And that means we're producing the radical at the secondary position instead of at the primary position. And that's kind of the hallmark of all of these radical addition reactions, that the radical that forms is formed at the more substituted position. And so even though we call this an anti-Markovnikov reaction. The reality is, is it's, it's behaving similarly to what we would expect with a reaction that follows the Markovnikov rule. The electron deficient intermediate ends up on the more substituted position. And then like other uh, radical addition reactions, the second propagation step is a hydrogen abstraction And then that serves to regenerate the 
ethyl thiol radical, which can go back into the first step of the propagation. A second reaction that follows this pattern, or can follow this pattern, is the hydrostanylation reaction. And this is similarly a reaction where we have an alkene, and the reagent it's going to react with here is a reagent that has a hydrogen tin bond. And a common, and the tin usually has alkyl groups on it, a common reagent is tributyl tin hydride. And a common radical initiator for this reaction is AIBN, azo isobutyro azo bis isobutyro nitrile. I'm going to draw the structure of that in a moment. But as a as a react as a radical reaction, it follows the same pattern of putting the tin on the less substituted position. So what I am drawing for you here is the structure of azo bis isobutyro nitrile. I'm not feeling yep I have an extra carbon atom in here so when your teacher is uh, complaining at you for drawing extra carbon atoms into your structure remember that uh, even organic chemists who've been at it a while can still make this mistake and draw too many carbons or not enough carbon atoms So here is the structure of azo bis isobutyro nitrile. And it's a really popular radical initiator because it can undergo homolytic cleavage to form uh, radicals at a much lower temperature than the peroxide radical initiators. So unlike uh, some of the other initiators, it doesn't require UV light to, to undergo fragmentation. It requires the addition of heat. And it can undergo fragmentation to form a radical at temperatures as low as 40 degrees Celsius. So not actually all that high. And what, what enables this to happen is that as this molecule undergoes... Uh, fragmentation to produce radicals, one of the molecules that it is producing is nitrogen, N2, which has a very strong nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond. And so that creates a lot of the thermodynamic driving force for uh, generating, or for this molecule to break down. The other radicals are those isobutyronitrile radicals. And these are the radicals that then go into producing the radicals that we need for our, our reaction. But that doesn't happen, or you might be tempted to start the propagation steps off, but the propagation steps are where the products of the reaction form. And if you look at the structure of our product, the isobutyro nitrile radical isn't in it. So we need to first generate the radical that's actually going to react with the alkene, and that's the tributyl tin radical. Okay. So here is another example, like the radical addition of HBr, of a reaction that has two initiation steps. First, our radical initiator decomposes to generate our, our initial radicals. And then that first radical reacts with one of our reagents to produce the active radical that's going to be needed in our propagation mechanism. And so the propagation mechanism then is a, a radical addition step followed by a hydrogen abstraction. It's the same 
pattern of steps that we've drawn, we may have drawn for any other radical type addition reaction. You know, our tributyl tin radical reacts with the alkene and produces a carbon radical, and that carbon radical will appear at the more substituted position, just like every other one of these reactions. And then in the second propagation step, there is a hydrogen abstraction from another molecule of tributyl tin hydride. So second hydrogen abstraction, and then that leads to the formation of the observed product, which is the addition of the tributyl pin hydride across the alkene, and it forms another tributyl tin radical, which can go back into the first propagation step. And of course, since I've got that hidden behind my my uh, <laughs> my, my little video inset there. So okay. Here is uh, the second reaction I wanted to share with you, which is hydrostanalization. These are just two examples. There are others out there, but these are two that are, are done reasonably commonly. Okay. And between this video and the one on the uh, addition of HBR, I think I've given you the tools to understand other radical additions to alkenes. Thank you for watching. <laughs>